introduce Arindam Arindam, who is our speaker for today's session. Um, folks, many of you all might have already come across his profile on uh, uh, Twitter, but if not, we will drop in a um, link to his profile. He is a fantastic, fantastic guy. I'm so sorry my video is not on or you would have seen this reaction. Uh, he is someone that I love engaging with. He's been uh, someone I've personally been, uh, you know, enjoying this conversations around blockchain, around Web3 and super knowledgeable. About blockchain 101, the first session talked about Web3 and how Web3 is solving a lot of problems. What can we build? What can we solve? How can we make a lot of money? But today we're going to learn about the very rails, right? the, the fundamental technologies that actually power this, right? And that's what today's session is about. Block has a bunch of data. Bunch of data could be anything, right? But I have just said that there are three three fields: block, nonce, and data. That's it, right? There are three fields, and I say that a block is valid if the net when I do a SHA two hundred and fifty six hash, which is when we discussed in the beginning, right? Just an arbitrary hash, right? Where I could generate any data. When when the hash starts with first four zeros, then I say that it's a block. Because it's an arbitrary blockchain, right? I'm just creating my own rules here. So I'm just saying that it should start with four zeros. No other purpose, right? So what is a block? A block consists of the block number, the nonce, some data, and a hash. And we say that a block is valid if it starts with four zeros. So now in a chain of blocks, I'm saying that every block has to be valid, right? Only then it's a valid block chain, right? Not only do you have to be valid, but every block that came before you has to be valid. Right. So now if I break, so now in this blockchain, okay, who can tell me if is block one valid? Right. Block one is valid because it starts with zero, right? And similarly, we see that every block is valid, right? Now let's break the block, right? So what have we done here? When we say this hash, this hash is coming from the block number, the nonce, the data, and the previous. So all four of this, when put through the hash function that we discussed, must end up with a new hash that starts with four zeros. That's when a block becomes valid. Correct? Now, now what does that mean? Let's let's look at this hash, right? It's zero 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 one five seven eight. So let's just remember one five seven eight. Now I change this data to GM, and of course it breaks, right? So we need to find the nonce, just like we did every time, right? Before this. Now it started with one five seven eight. So we're just going to mine and find a new number. Uh, Let's just wait for that to happen. And yeah, it's 30848. Now the hash starts with 0005D06. It's no longer 1578, right? It's a new hash. It starts with four zeros, but because we changed the data, it's a new hash. So now, because this hash got copied here, right, from 1578 to 5D06, now this hash no longer adds up to first four zeros, right? Everyone understands this? Because. Yeah. Okay, still kind of, no worries. We're gonna try one more time, right? Let's remove this data here, right? And remind this and see if that fixes the entire blockchain, right? We just have a bunch of blocks with empty data, right? So what I think that's what that's what might happen if me and you build a blockchain. Is this gonna be a lot of blocks with no data in it? <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think people are getting a hang of it. There are right. people, but yeah. Right. So one five seven eight. Right. Look at this. This previous is zero just because it's the first block, right? It's original block. And then the, the second block, the previous is what the hash of the previous block was. So one five seven eight came here to one five seven eight, and then uh, we have to mine the second one. That's going to give us four zeros, right? And that's going to go to the next one, and the next one, and then next one, right? But essentially, each one of them have to be one five seven eight, right? So uh, I have to start with the previous one's hash, right? So what does this mean, right? This means that if I change any data in this block, even after it's mined correctly, this data is going to change, right? So it's now B618. And since B618 came here, this net hash is no longer going to add up to four zeros, right? It just starts with one zero now. So all of the ha of, of the hashes, because all of them changed, none of them are going to add up now, the first four zeros. Right? So all of them are broken. So I have to go back and fix all of them, essentially find new nonsense every time. To go back and find out, so okay, now this one is added to four zeros, but this changed here. I have to fix this one. So now instead of FFEF, I need to end up with a new one that says, hey, now we have four zeros, right? And then on to the next one. Now, so now we have four zeros, and then we mine, and then we mine, and we keep going to be sort of the entire block, right? 
right? So now what does that mean? I cannot go back in time, just change a blockchain and uh, just change a block in the blockchain and expect everything else to work as it is, right? That is what immutability means. Immutability means, yes, like a domino, like Aditya quoted, right? One falls and everything else in front of it is broken, right? So what this means is that once I have said that, hey, this block one is done, it's here for eternity. If you change anything in block one, none of the blocks in the front of it is going to be valid. If you change anything in block n, anything from n plus one to infinity is not going to be valid. So this is why any data pushed to a blockchain is not valuable, right? Thank you.